Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Today I would like to share my vision. And this is about the vision of Jesus. Now, normally I go early to church. The church starts at around 8 a.m. And I would be there at around uh, maybe 7.30. But on this particular Sunday, I was there at 7.20. And when I entered the church, I already saw two people there. One was an elderly sister and the other was an elderly brother. So I sat in my place and I heard the Lord telling me to kneel down and to lift my hand and praise him. I was really not comfortable doing that. And so I didn't do it. And again, the Lord told me the second time. I want you to kneel down and I want you to lift your hand and I want you to praise me. So this time what I did, I looked around. Of course, there was nobody there except these two people. And I was a little bit hesitant to do that. And I said, Lord, I'm not comfortable doing it. And then again, for the third time, the Lord told me, I want you to kneel down, lift your hands and praise me. Again, he, he, said, it for, uh, he said that for the third time. And so I did it. I did it. I, I was sincerely praising the Lord. As I was kneeling down and lifting my hands and praising the Lord, suddenly I was surrounded by a large wave. You know, um, it was actually, it was a wave of God's presence, but I didn't know at that time. And it was, it was too strong. It was so intense that I was really not in a steady position. I was kind of moving back and forth. And I was really scared where I'm going to fall backward. So I opened my eyes and I just looked up. I was just looking if the fan was turned on. Maybe it could be the fan. Um, maybe, you know, the air is blowing or um, I was just wondering like what happened. And then I looked at the sister and then I looked at the brother. And, uh, you know, they were praying there and uh, they were like kind of okay. And there was something wrong. Like there was something wrong in here. Like something was going on. And I didn't understand what it was. And then anyway, I thought, okay. Just let me pray. And then again, I was closing my eyes and I was lifting my hands and I was praising the Lord. And again, for the second time, the way was so intense. It was too strong that I really couldn't continue my prayer. And so I opened my eyes and I asked myself, like, what is going on? Like, what is happening here? There's something happening here. You know, this, you know, the sister over there, I mean, she's just praying. I mean, there's nothing happening to her. The brother over there, he's praying. There's nothing happening to him, but there's something happening here. So I was, I, I mean, I really wanted to know like what's going on. And as I was questioning myself, you won't believe, I really saw Jesus at the pulpit. I mean, he was just sitting there and um, I couldn't see his face, but I knew in my spirit, he was so happy. He was so happy at the three of us that we were so early, I mean, that we were early and um, in fact, the, the brother and the sister, they were praying and here I was praying. And I was asking myself, Lord, you know, the church is supposed to start at 8, I mean, at eight o'clock. And the co-pastor is not here because he no, he's the one who normally leads us in, uh, in worship, you know, the praise and worship. He does the praise and worship, followed by the lead pastor. He comes a little late at round nine. And even the people are not here. And how come you're here? You know, I really, I, I really asked the Lord and I really saw him there. He was sitting and he was so happy. I couldn't see his face, but I knew that in my spirit, he was so happy. And I was really shocked because I thought normally the Lord might come because, you know, since the church starts at eight, so I thought maybe he would be there like, you know, five minutes early. I was really surprised. The Lord was, I mean, he was there. He was there already. And I think he would be so happy to see people coming early and, you know, um, praising him there and worshipping. So this is something that I wanted to share. So this is the first vision. Now the second vision is, this has happened in the very same church, but on a different Sunday. Now here the lead pastor is leading us in prayer. And it was a deliverance prayer. The prayer was so intense. It was really very strong. And during that time, I was closing my eyes and I was really asking the Lord to break some chains in my life. And as I was praying, I was in total agreement with the pastor. Like as he was praying, I was, you know, telling to the Lord, Lord, do it, do it, just break some chains in my life. And as I was praying, I really saw the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus. He was walking down the aisle from the, from the front row and he had a very 
a large uh, a kind of shear, it's a giant scissor, he had something like that. You can see here the picture of it. It was a huge one and he was just walking down the aisle and he was looking at the people's face. And then I looked at him and the reason why the Lord brought that huge, uh, you know, that shear in the sand, it's to break some chains. That's what I believe because that's what I saw. And as he was walking down, I saw him looking at the people. He was looking at their face so intently. And I was wondering, why is he looking like that? And then the Spirit of the Lord made me realize why he did that. Because he was looking at the people, whether if they were worshipping him in spirit and in truth, or just by their lips. And when I really saw that, I was really, really scared. He was looking at each face so intently, very closely like this. Very closely. He was looking and I was I was really scared I was really scared because you know sometimes I'm distracted sometimes I really don't worship the Lord in spirit and in truth because that's what the Bible says God is a spirit and that we must worship him in spirit and in truth I'm going to share that scripture to you a little later and as he was looking at the people I don't know what he would see because I cannot see their hearts but he was looking at them and then he kept walking down and then he moved, at, uh, he came at the back and he crossed me, but that thing was really scary. That was really scary. So let me share the scripture and then there are some few things that I would like to add in this video. Take a look at the scripture. Now this is what it says in John 4, 24. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now there is another scripture in Matthew chapter 15 verses 8 to 9. These people honor me with your lips but your heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines as commandments of men. So the question is, are you a true worshipper of God or are you a worshipper by your lips? You know, when I really saw that vision of, you know, the Lord was looking at the people, you know, I was really scared. I was scared. I, I, I don't know about them, but I was frightened because I know myself. Sometimes I find it very difficult to pay attention. Sometimes I get distracted. You know, sometimes I don't worship the Lord in spirit and truth. So that was a kind of warning for me. And this should be a warning to you as well. So make sure to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You know, one thing that I've noticed is, I mean, this is not happening in the church that I'm going, but in every church is, you know, when they see the lead pastor, oh my goodness, they just pretend that they're worshiping the Lord, they just throw their hands up in the air and they just pretend like, you know, that they're truly worshiping. But, but God knows, I mean, God is already there and he knows your heart. He knows that if you're, it's, it's just because the lead pastor is there and you're doing all this for him. I mean, he knows that. So let us not fake our worship. Let us not worship God by our lips but truly from our heart. And you know, another thing that really saddens me is, you know, there are so many uh, volunteers, there are people who are serving the church. They don't have a humble spirit. They don't have a welcoming spirit. They don't even smile. They don't welcome the people. They don't uh, serve others, especially even, I'm talking about the people who are, um, who are working as a team. There is no unity. You know, they behave like people at, people on the streets and they laugh, they mock, they criticize, most of all they gossip, they slander, they, they do all kinds of evil things. I'm talking about these are people who do it in church. And God is watching. God is watching all these things. I don't know how people they behave that way. I mean when the pastor is there they behave differently. And when the pastor is not there, they don't realize that Jesus is there and he is watching. He is watching all these things. You know, lately, I told a brother to do something. And you know what he did for me in return? He blocked me on WhatsApp. 
these are the people. But he would brag around and say, you know, I'm doing ministry, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm going to different churches and I'm doing this and that. Who cares? Does God really care about your ministry when you have a wicked heart like this? When you're not willing to humble yourself and serve others? I mean, if you look at our Lord, when he came, when he was here on earth, he was serving people. And we're supposed to serve others. We're supposed to help one another. Nobody is a boss there. Nobody is a leader there. We're here to help one another. And we're doing all this for the, for the Lord. And the Lord is watching. The Lord is a real boss, not a pastor. Whether our pastor is there or not there, it's not important. But Jesus is watching. And, you know, there are a lot of volunteers. Please, if you're really doing something for the Lord, make sure you're very sincere, humble, and you're very committed. And don't try to please your pastor, your lead pastor, co-pastor, whatever, or the elders, or the pastor's family. We are not here to please the pastor. We are here to please the Lord because this church belongs to him. This church, the church where you go, it belongs to Jesus. So we're here to please the, please the Lord and not the pastor. So be very careful with your behavior because there are people watching us. You know, we look at people in two eyes, but there are more than 100 eyes that are looking on us. They're watching us. So we need to be very careful because the Bible says that you will know them by their fruits. So stop bragging about your ministry. Stop telling that, you know, I do this for my church. I do there and I do this and that, you know. Your ministry is worthless if you have a wicked heart. So let us humble ourselves and help one another. Let us not disregard the needs of other people. And let us love one another and help one another and have a good character and do everything that will please the Lord. So thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to stay in this world and be blessed.